let's start with the uh, the the show playing for the music gallery in yeah. Toronto, which sounds fascinating. Tell us tell us what you have planned. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, I play a synthesizer, and I have two synthesizers and a drum machine, which are right there, and I, and I also have a lighting console. So what I'm doing is building a bridge between the output of the synthesizers and uh, going into the uh, controlling the lighting console. Um, so all of it is operating over a MIDI signal. And basically the call went out from Music Gallery looking for something ambitious that you don't, that you probably need funding to figure it out and, you know, something you've always wanted to try. And I'm like, I'm a, I'm a lighting designer and I'm a musician. And I work with MIDI in both of those fields, but in, in wildly different ways. And I knew that they, that these things that I was using are speaking the same language, but I've never seen them really communicate in a one-to-one -one way. So I knew that it was possible. And I know, and I knew a little bit about MIDI, um, MIDI networking going in, but um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to put these two things together. Cause I've known for a long time that they do go together. I've just never really had the opportunity to, to do that. So the synthesizer triggers the lighting, is that how it works? That's correct, yeah. And what led you to be interested in that kind of approach to a, to a show? Yeah, um, I'm a lighting designer by trade. Uh, so I work with lighting a lot and music has always been something that, well, I guess more recently has been something that I've been doing for fun. Um, I, you know, I took music lessons as a kid and whatever, and um, it wasn't until I joined a band about 10 years ago um, and uh, that really rekindled my love for music in terms of playing music. I've always been an avid listener, of course. But um, yeah, and then uh, after I got my first synthesizer, I wanted to do something involving that. So that's sort of what spawned my solo um, work was mostly just to write music. That was always the goal. I'm just like, the goal is use this thing and write music. <laughs> that was the whole thing. <laughs> the way that I approach any, any art making is that you're in conversation with, with the medium. So I think when you are, like you're, 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 it's sort of like you're speaking a language, but you have to use like a, a filter to, to um, speak. <laughs> and uh, so I guess I feel that sound and light and color are all kind of made of the same stuff. You know, they're, they're all wavelengths that like go into our bodies in some way. And I think that um, I guess what I was interested in, in exploring and something that I do explore in the music that I make is how to make sound visual. Um, and usually that's like, typically it's just happening in your imagination. But in this case, you know, I'm trying to find a language in, in lighting to, to do that. Is the music composed or will you be improvising? It's a mix of both. Um, it's, I sort of, I have the patches worked out in terms of the sounds my synth is making. Um, and I'll know sort of what key the song is in and I'll kind of go from there. Wonderful. Now you, um, you mentioned that you, you earn a living as a lighting designer mm -hmm. um, for both music and non-musical projects as I understand it. Yeah. But what's the difference between the two? Is there a fundamentally different approach? Definitely. Well, for theater, you really need to see their faces. <laughs> and <laughs> for music, I mean, you want to see the people, but <laughs> it's more about kind of creating a mood and, and an energy. And I mean, theater is a lot more subtle in that way that, you know, you're, you're creeping in and sort of uh, being a chameleon in, in the space and you're working with a lot of other things, you know, the, the people and the time of day and the reality of the play is changing. And, you know, there, there's all kinds of subtle ways that you can communicate. Um, but ultimately, 
most of the time you don't want to be drawing too much attention to yourself. If you, if you are, it's either super on purpose or super a mistake. <laughs> There's no in between. <laughs> um, so, but for music, it's, you know, I find you can be as loud as you want with the lighting and you're never ever gonna be as loud as the music. <laughs> and um, that I think is really fun. It, it gives a lot of freedom, I feel, to make, I guess what's, what's cool about both music and light is that they happen like over time, you know, which, it, which is different than say uh, looking, at a, looking at a painting. Um, it's, it doesn't happen, in, it's not a static image in, in any way it's sort of unraveling. That's something that I like about both of those mediums that they um, yeah, happen across time. <laughs> Imagine when you go to see a, a band or an artist perform, mm -hmm. you've got a unique perspective on that show in total, both from a lighting and a music perspective. Do you find it hard to, to kind of put the uh, critic aside? No, I mean, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't know. And I mean, even, even in waking life, I'll, um, like in, da in daily life, I'll be, I feel, I really pity bad lighting. Like I feel bad, <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for it. Or sometimes I'll, uh, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to, to lighting and forming a situation. Mm. <laughs> um, I can, I can remember one time, uh, I was, I was working and I was hanging I was hanging lights, so we just had like the room lights on, and then um, everybody in the room, like other people, were working. They were doing other stuff. They were building stuff, and so these like really harsh fluorescent lights are on. We're all working away, and everyone's really stressed out, like they were just stressed out. And then I'm like, okay, guys, I have to turn all the lights off so I can like focus, like point everything in the right direction. And I I turn the lights off, and it starts just being like really hush, really dim, and kind of one light is on at a time, and it's like really careful. And everyone just like calmed down and they were like, I would like point a light at something someone was working at and they'd be like, it looks really good. And they'd like, <laughs> like they're looking at their own work and thinking like having a totally different opinion of it. And I'm like, it's the light, the light is doing that. They're like, no, no, I'm like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> it's cool that you don't see it, but like, it's definitely there. <laughs> that's part of the medium's power, isn't it? That people mm -hmm. don't really appreciate how much of an impact it has on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, I, I once heard that we see according to light. And I, I really, I feel strongly that that's true. Um, I've often thought photography, and I guess motion photography as well, um, is really fundamentally about light. I think, I think a lot of visual art forms are. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about your various music projects, too, because um, I have to say processor. Um, boy, does that resonate with me. So, oh, amazing. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. So described as a post-punk. I would say. Group, fair, post -punk. fair characterization. That's the music I grew up with. Oh, amazing. And I got to tell you, you have just captured the essence of it. Like, I, it, it hit me right away. Like, boy. They really get it. They really get where that music is coming from. So oh, amazing. That's so cool. I'm but but here's the thing. I mean, that's music of a very different time. And I'm curious how you how you've been able to embrace that so successfully. Um like as in post-punk as a genre, or yeah, as in yeah. it's a different you, your your appreciation of it and, and even understanding of it is yeah. very impressive to me. Where's that come from? I think just listening, like I think I, I listen to music all the time and that's, it's the kind of music that I like. Um, I wouldn't say, I mean, I call it post-punk. It was really other people were calling us that and I, I really didn't know how to call what, like what we were doing because <laughs> um, it, it, it was very improvisational and um, it just kind of came out that way. <laughs> What is that? What what's the appeal of that style of music to you personally? Mm. I mean, again, I think it's about listening. That when you're improvising, you can't be adhering to something you have in your head. You you just have to be really present and really listening to to what you're doing. 
um, because because as I said earlier, like it's a, it's a conversation. You're having a conversation. So um, when you're improvising, um, yeah, it's it's like I think that playing music is is an act of listening, even though what the way that you're listening is audible. <laughs> it's your interpretation of a musical idea, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And, and that interpretation can come both as a listener and as a performer, composer, improviser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, I, I, obviously you listen to other forms of music. Um, how, how wide is your uh, interest in music? Do you have multiple genres that, definitely. that yeah. excite you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I wouldn't say I'm tied to a genre, I'm just tied to my taste. <laughs> yeah, that's all. What what impresses you? Uh, hmm. I think I tend to like things that evoke strong emotions, um, or things that I heard a quote one time that said, "There's no beauty without a touch of strangeness," and I think I feel that way about music. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And then two, um, I've seen them described as ambient. I, I would just simply call them electronic more generally. Um, no Color Blue, which is a, a duo, if I yeah. understand it correctly. And then your solo recordings is Saturn City. That's right. Would you like yeah. us to know about those two projects? Yeah, I think... Um, both of them started while I was playing in Processor and um, I, lo I really loved what Processor was doing, um, but I guess I was wanting to A, play synthesizer and B, kind of make something really pretty. <laughs> and I think, I think especially with No Color Blue, it was like our goal was to just make something like really still and really pretty was like the main goal of what we were doing and we kind of had a concept of trying to evoke um like a color like we would sort of say like okay this song is like blue and we would both like try our best to like do that <laughs> um and actually there's a bit of a lighting connection with no color blue um because uh colored filters that go in front of lights are called gels and gels um, have an, usually a letter and a, and a number associated with them. Um, so all of our songs are named after uh, gel colors. And uh, probably the, I think it's the only one that's on our band camp is the um, two, the, those, those ones, on, I think it's R60 and L202, I believe. And they're both, uh, different manufacturers of the color no color blue so actually they're like a very pale blue <laughs> and um and i sort of feel like we are playing that color that's what we're trying to do play like a very pale blue <laughs> um which was sort of the goal and then uh with saturn city yeah i would say my main uh concept there well I guess my main goal is a again play synthesizer and b write music and c uh kind of conceptually I choose a moon of Saturn <laughs> and I research it and then I try to suggest as strongly as possible the the attributes of that of that place so for example um my first album Enceladus. Enceladus is such a cool moon. It has an underground ocean that is liquid water. It comes, it comes out uh, of the surface of the moon in these geysers that then instantly turn into snow because there's no atmosphere and they instantly turn into ice and then they fall gently back onto the moon. So wow. it's like this totally crazy place, right? And so I tried to write that, you know, I write about like, an underground ocean. I write about like ice, snow, like gently drifting on a moon in the middle of space. And I'm trying to like evoke these images by choosing different sounds, choosing different um, 
you know, chord like progressions. Um, and what was cool when I played that album live, I tried, I explained like this song is about <laughs> this cool snowfall on a distant moon. And I would like explain it. And it was cool, like the people, people who spoke to me after were like, I could like see it, like I could see it. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the point. Like I'm trying to like beam an image into your head. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, Saturn has 62 moons. So it's a good way to keep writing, I think. And like, they're, they're all really different from each other. Um, a recent album that I put out, Titan. Titan is also, it's like wildly different. And it has conditions of life on it, actually. Like there could be like, it would be really different than life on it. But it's it's pretty cool to read about this stuff and it's really inspiring. Well, I'm struck as I hear you describe both of these projects, um, a lot of thinking and conceptualizing behind the music, um, which suggests a, a kind of an intellectual bent to the work. And yet you started by saying you wanted to create something beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Are you conscious of that distinction between music that's aimed at the heart versus the head? I think that, um, I don't know. I don't know that I would call it intellectual necessarily. I think that it's visual in some ways. And so I, I want to conjure a beautiful image for the listener and to make them feel like they're experiencing something. Um, and it doesn't, I mean, I think that processor did that too. I, you know, conjured something, even though it wasn't so, um, it wasn't as visual, but I think it was as emotional in a way. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't know, I wouldn't say that I'm trying to, uh, I'm not writing an essay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think processor is very visual. Uh, I absolutely yeah. relate to that. Um, yeah, right not beautiful though, right? That's it's a sure, different, yeah. it's a different kind of vibe and one, I mean, that's the whole, what well, part of, part of what the whole post-punk thing was about, right? It was about tearing down that notion of music that was purely designed to um, make us happy. Mm -hmm. Right. It was for me as a young person, an, an incredible lesson in the emotional range that music could offer us. Mm -hmm. And it was just so beautifully mysterious. That was that was the thing that intrigued me. And um, the ideas behind that have kind of informed my perspective on all kinds of different forms of art, very much like you said, that you got to have a little bit of weirdness to appreciate beauty. Yeah. I recently read, you've got to have a little bit of darkness to under, understand the brightness and really appreciate it. And it becomes those contrasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the push and pull. 